Okay, so how many people uh, know anything about Splunk? How many people have heard about Splunk? Okay, pretty, pretty good. Um, that's awesome. So I have 15 minutes to help the rest of you understand what we do. And so um, my plan is, is to do a little overview, a few slides um, to give you a basic understanding. This mic is so, uh, sorry for ears. I felt like I had to stand on my tippy toes to talk here. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna walk through a couple of slides. We're gonna get some interaction. So we're gonna play a little game here. Hopefully it'll be interesting. And then I have a couple of use cases, depending on if I run out of time, Kelsey will tell me to get off stage if I, if I talk too long. So, who am I? How many people got the big data, love big data t-shirt from us yesterday or, yeah, I guess, it, yeah, yesterday. So, I live in Sacramento. We don't have any beautiful waves like you do here in Hawaii. But I do have a boat that has a uh, wave maker behind and I can cheat and do, you know, surfing behind my boat. So it's, it's a little bit of an endless wave. But anyway, so I've been with Splunk for seven years, worked with a, a lot of different uh, use cases and, and big data is for sure a big piece of what we do. Uh, and our mission is to take in machine data and make it accessible, usable and valuable to everyone. So this is security, I know, conference. So uh, obviously machine data is very important to security. So not only do you have typical security data sources, but you can have data sources from all kinds of different things. You can, you know, if you have SCADA systems, you can bring that into Splunk. Uh, so we operate on anything that you can textually read. We can bring it into one spot and you can do all kinds of analysis, search, report, and alert off that data. Here are some of the different security use cases. We have an enterprise security app that gives you the ability to do your traditional SIM feature set where you're looking for incident forensics, investigations, compliance auditing, um, and being able to uh, detect known threats. Where Splunk really comes in handy against, you know, most other SIMs is that we can help you with those unknown th threats. So you can really uh, start to do a lot of the things that my, my previous uh, presenter here talked about, searching through that data and really finding what you need in terms of um, how it's traversing, how things are traversing in through your network. All right, so let's have some fun. So I, I need everybody to take out your mobile devices. And if you can go to http slunk.com slash shake. There'll be a couple of questions that you'll be asked. You'll be asked, what's your uh, favorite state? If everyone picks Hawaii, the dashboard's not gonna look so cool. But if you pick your favorite state, if you uh, pick a team, we could be white hat, black hat if you want, or you could just put your name and see if you could, you could get on the board. So I, I'm, oh, I gotta log into the app too. So, oh, Salt's already there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can, get salt and get my name with my uh, my shake. Oh, there, Cindy, there I'm going. Anybody else? Oh, okay, so you're not seeing what I'm seeing. Um, right now it's on my pres uh, PowerPoint. Okay, I think I know how to get rid of that. Let me get out of presenter mode for PowerPoint. I think that uh, that's what's killing it. So I'm seeing it on my screen. I'm not sure why, uh, maybe it's... Okay, that, that should do it. All right, here we go. Now, now we can shake. I started to have some data over here in New York. 
Suddenly, suddenly, of course, you know, every time we do these demos in front of a live audience, it was working perfectly fine before I displayed it on the big screen. You guys could have hovered over on my little laptop. Um, and now, of course, let me, uh, let me try one other thing. I don't want to waste too much of my, uh, let me, let me uh, refresh this. There we go, yay. Okay, so we have built our own little word cloud here. We got people shaking, we have, we have Android devices, we have Apple devices, we have favorite locations that we're seeing, uh, the cities and states that you have selected. Um, so, so this is a good example of machine data coming into Splunk and being able to visualize and analyze that data in a way that people can understand it. We didn't, did we have any competition? Let's see, Android was winning, but yeah, I have an Apple, shoot. Okay, now, how much time, how much time do I have left, Kelsey? Eight minutes. Eight minutes, okay, great. So I can now talk about a few use cases here. Let me get back into uh, presenter view. Okay, so um, I focus on the state of California. One of my customers is Franchise Tax Board, and they purchase Splunk to uh, look at insider threat. So they have all their application logs that they're bringing into Splunk, and they are looking at need to know. So if a, if a taxpayer is calling up and asking questions about their tax documents, that analyst gets to see that data. Now, if they start looking at data from their husband or their neighbor or their friends or family, that's not such a good thing. So the Splunk is used to alert and highlight if any of that type of activity is going on. Well, once they had all this data in there, so the F5 logs, the application logs, the web logs, they found they stumbled upon another use case. So what happened was, um, they had people that were logging into an internal app that all of a sudden I would log in and I would be log seeing George's information. And so um, they would call the IT help desk and the help desk would say, ah, oh, just, you know, log out and log back in, you're fine, you know, ho hopefully it'll, it'll get the right user. Well, luckily somebody was worried about this because when you get a job at Franchise Tax Board, they tell you about the fact that they can actually throw you in jail if you look at the wrong thing or they can charge you lots of money. And so they called the security office and said, hey, I'm logging into this application and I'm seeing somebody else's information. And so the security team got a hold of this and started to look at Splunk and investigated based on, it, it took all of the logs that are listed up here to uh, identify the actual root cause of this problem. They started out saying, you know, is this an external hijacking thing? Is this something that's malicious? Is this, is this a problem with the web part of the application? And so they went down the list of different things and it turned out that it was the authentication component of the app that wasn't communicating with Active Directory. And so uh, they found an actual vulnerability or a bug in the vendor software. And they were able to prove that very easily with the data. Vendor fixed the problem. They now have an alert to make sure that it doesn't happen again. So that's one interesting use case. Uh, let's see. This next one I'll call Operation Find a Fish. So, this was uh, Duke University. They had a, um, they had just purchased Splunk and they had, they had a couple of professors actually that, you know, probably multi multitasking because they got some pretty bad fish email that said, hey, you qualify for a, ri a raise. They actually wrote rise, but you know, it w worked. And so they linked, they clicked on the link, of course, they gave all the credentials, all the nice information, and the attackers uh, traversed through, got their credentials, logged into the payroll system, rerouted their paycheck, and these guys get paid once a month, so it was a pretty good paycheck. They got rerouted and sent to the wrong people. And that happened to four individuals. So uh, Splunk was, 
there a little bit after the fact on that one, but they started to then, you know, create some dashboards around email phishing campaigns, who's falling for them, starting to do some searches and alerts based on multiple IP addresses, perhaps outside of the Duke network, same user account, logging in. Uh, the result of the, of, of the thing is they started to put some alerts in place to prevent this from happening. They got, they got the payroll team to do multi-factor authentication, so they made some changes in their process. And by having Splunk and all this data together, they were starting to collaborate a little bit more on the security front, so it, it really helped them to uh, start to join forces uh, with their security team. So I have one more use case. Do I have time for that? Okay. This, this last use case that I have is, uh, I'll, I won't uh, mention the name of the agency because it's a little bit of an embarrassing situation for them, but uh, they're a fairly new Splunk customer. The first bit of data that they got was from Palo Alto Logs, and uh, they started to, the security team start, it's a pretty complex network with a lot of virtualized environment, a lot of uh, sub-networks, they are a parent agency with a lot of departments that report in and share the network. And so um, the security team got Splunk, started looking at what was, what was uh, being blocked, and, the, and they had a lot of traffic that was coming in from Russia and China, and you know this is an agency that doesn't do any business in any of those countries. And they called the network team and then, oh, no, no, we got that blocked. We got, we don't, you know, well, we're, we're not blocking it because we're seeing it. So it turned out that there's probably about 14 different places that they didn't block. Uh, so they, they really didn't have a very good idea about what their network looked like. So um, anyway, we, we helped shine the light on some of that stuff. So with that, hopefully you got a little picture of what Splunk can do. If you have any questions or have any more um, insight, love to get you guys talking to one another, get some user group stuff going on in Hawaii, um, and um, come say hi. Thanks. <laughs>